But there's so much imagination in politics. I love like this, even the sound of the kind of fabric wool as it goes, you know, like on my wooden floor. So I don't even believe that comedy is an escape. It's more uh, actually a way of like accessing like the really serious stuff. Being on the one hand you have the like Marshall plan and on the other hand you have like you know the freshness of fascism. What's the response is painting. This is Elena Platinova. Today I am in the studio of LA-based uh, Bulgaria-born artist Eva Georgieva. I'd like to ask you about the techniques and the medium employed in your recent body of work. So uh, these are all large-scale, I call them tapestry paintings, and uh, they're on muslin and unstretched. Um, they hang on the wall. The idea is to sort of liberate painting from the constraints of the stretch of art, opening up painting into the possibility of exploring more sculptural space. So the, these are, you know, 120 by about 80 inches, which is, you know, my arm span. Uh, I was very interested in this kind of bodily relationship, you know, my body in relationship to the surface, but then um, I really was interested in this verticality, you know, this kind of larger than my body, more monumental scale. The, the, the scale is semi-totemic, I would say. The intention is to, on the one hand, connect to the physical dimensions of like my own body, and on the other hand, sort of exceed that. According to Corbusier, uh, tapestries are portable murals, and just that phrase alone is so filled for poss with possibility for me because of you know the scale, but also this kind of uh, you know you fold it up, you move on, or um, you know you can take these and you know place them anywhere. It just felt like an absolutely kind of essential gesture to just unroll the muslin directly on the floor, which is interesting because this is a material I've worked with for, you know, 20 years, but it was always getting cut up and then collaged into the stretch paintings, and now it is the painting. Even, like, from a fragment now, it's this hole. Uh, and unrolling it on the floor, I love, like, the, even the sound of the kind of fabric roll as it goes, you know, like, on my wooden floor and here's this you know field on which I can sit, lay, uh, walk and paint, cut. Uh, the other thing that's been really specific to this particular body of work is this insistence almost on instead of basing my decisions on you know entirely on my eye, right, you know the compositional sort of decision making that I feel it's framed by my education, experience, and so on, instead to f work on the floor in the midst of the painting and almost like register with the paint and allow the, the surface to absorb the color. I mean, I always think of it as like, you know, developing or, uh, so for example, this painting behind me started with taking the fabric, crumbling it on the floor in the shape of a sleeping body, and then taking a very large brush, brush and running it across the, the surface, developing the topography, you know, allowing for the paint to sort of reveal like what those folds look like, so these blue marks. Um, throughout the, the painting is this indigo paint. So something about like the, you know, here's paint revealing the truth of this material. So it's a re interesting like kind of flip between, you know, what's real, what's an illusion. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's always been interesting for me in, in painting. You know, what's, what's that range? And you know, you, of course you can extend it to politics, you can extend it to, you know, day-to-day -day life, you know, what's real, what's an illusion. My aunt was a puppeteer, and, you know, Bulgarian puppeteer is very elaborate. It's not like just a, you know, it's a kid, it, so it's an art form, it's not just a kid thing, I mean. But what I do remember very clearly is this frustration 
because on the one hand, I knew even as you know a two-year-old, three-year-old, you know, I, I knew how to behave in the theater. <laughs> but I remember like that incredible pain and tension. The way that theater works is, you know, you have kind of parallel things happening, so you have like multiple simultaneous narratives in a way, and like, you know, but they're pretending not to be aware of each other's, you know fates and unfolding in the same time and as an audience member you're obviously witnessing and you're like but just look right behind you i still remember that frustration and so i mean it's interesting there's a painting in here that actually deals with that it's called two howls they're a single you know carrier sort of event and and then you know definite collage screen in front of it that you know, you're very, you know, I was very clear about preserving, you know, that, that edge as I collage the two pieces together. What's happening on one panel is this character, this like gas mask rabbit that I've been painting for and drawing for many years since I guess 2005 maybe or really earlier. So it's a recurring um, figure, it's not... It's a recurring figure. figure. Yeah, no, it's not. It's actually even earlier because, um, uh, it's just this this rabbit, uh, this gas mask rabbit. Uh, it's a, you know, like a self portrait, and um, and in, in this particular painting, she also has a creature in her on her back. And you know, there's definitely some kind of really dramatic explosion happening, you know, behind her. But there seems to be no, you know, direct relationship between the two um, you know, panels. So so her. Her fate seems indeterminate. You know whether she will catch up to the fact of you know this event unfolding and therefore be able to escape, or whether you know she will be subsumed because of her. You know. And that's an interesting thing that a theme in my work. Uh, the precariousness of the moment. Precariousness of the moment. So you know what's what you know is there such thing as you know an escape. Can you witness something and and somehow escape escape it? There's a, a uncanny resilience there, but then it's also always in the in the middle of whatever drama, you know. Um, and there's the question like, does the does the rabbit deserve the the violence too? How complex, you know, that idea of innocence really is. So to what extent is, you know, somebody going shopping in the United States, you know, complicit in the violence being, ex you know, uh, enacted on his or her behalf in, in Iraq. This gas mask rabbit was my sort of avatar, my alter ego. Yeah, alter ego. It's a, it's a way to explore also these deep and conflicting feelings of, um, you know, the need to escape. You know, I, I broke my foot this fall in the midst of this, you know, very active, physically uh, experience of painting these, uh, you know, tapestries. And then all of a sudden, like, I felt like somebody just really, like, took the ground out like away from me and so there I was with this you know enormous cast unable to do anything on my couch for weeks and so uh, instead of lamenting I just allowed like the circumstances to just get me into this space of these small intimate drawings that I was working on and um, that feature <laughs> like the the stripy cast. Um, I, I don't know who said this, but I wrote it down in my sketchbook many years ago. And it was like you can say a lot of serious things through absurdity. So I don't even believe that comedy is an escape. It's more uh, actually a way of countering, like accessing like the really serious stuff and telling stories that are you know like almost unbearable actually. And that's why we laugh.
it's interesting that on the one hand you're saying that you're retreating into your personal space and at the same time you're talking about liberation of the painting, of the canvas, of the painting from the constraints of the canvas and even the way you're doing it, painting directly on the floor, splaying the paint all over the fabric, of course, uh, referencing the abstract expressionist vigor and you know Jackson Pollock's practice. It's an interesting duality, but who, who are other figures, perhaps movements, um, collectives who, who you reference or maybe subconsciously influenced by in this body of work? Well, it's interesting because it's, yeah, it's true. I think that we, if this is like kind of a revolutionary or at least like we need a revolutionary response. And so what I've been thinking a lot about is one, like Russian constructivist, so there's this kind of utopian, you know, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking a lot about like Vladimir Tatlin. Uh, especially when I was working on the sculptures, he was sort of like my echo, you know. Um, but now with the tapestries, I would say it's uh, Italian art povera and um, um, and also the support surf surf uh, surface movement in, in in Paris. And it's interesting because both of those are occasions of extreme political turmoil. Um, so in in the case of the Italian art povera, this is post war, and it's just this. You know, moment of like reckoning. On the one hand, you have the like martial plan, and on the other hand, you have like you know the the, the freshness of you know fascism. So, um, what is the response? Is painting, and and then with the support surface uh, uh, movement. This is post sixty eight. You know, in Paris. So another time it's of turmoil. A, another time of turmoil, and and it's interesting in both cases. You have this kind of this, this opening up of painting and materials. And there's like a, um, almost like a historical precedent for making painting an appropriate response, which for me it's always this question like, gosh, what is the appropriate response? You know, what's an honest way of being in the world? In some of your canvases, you don't only use collage and layers of fabric, but you slay through. There are even this work right here, you have holes in the canvas and you kind of open it to the new dimension. And I'm thinking about Lucia Fontana, of course, and of course. that liberation. Yeah, Fontana is a really, really important uh, artist for me. Uh, you know, there's something about this you know, stabbing and this, you know, the slicing, the cutting, you know, opening up the body of the painting to the sort of reality of, you know, like scars, whether it's on the landscape or on the, the physical human body. The rabbit figure is oftentimes, especially in the drawings, sort of protective and yeah. caring, and it carries little rabbits with and out of the fire. Yes. In your life, you are going through a um, very um, important, interesting time. You have a 10-year-old boy, and how do you feel like it has affected your work? Of course, like it's, you know, somewhere in my subconscious, there's always this, you know, like, how do I, how do I, you know, protect my, my kids? <laughs> <laughs> what can I do to, I mean, to have a child is to believe in some kind of future, and that's a really hard thing right now. <laughs> so, you know, I, I keep making paintings. <laughs>